Hi everybody, uh, Levi Clay here and uh, I've got a new video format for you today. Um, somebody sent me a long email uh, asking some questions, looking for some advice and uh, normally uh, content like this I'd, I would shoot back and say well you know you want a lesson really more so than anything there or uh, you, if you support me on Patreon blah 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 but I figured these were some actually quite interesting questions um, that might be of interest to some of you guys out there in YouTube land. So I'm going to read the email, respond to the questions, and uh, hopefully more than one person will get some use out of it. So, um, hi Levi, my name is George Jones. I'm a guitarist from Australia, and the reason for emailing you is to ask for some advice. Hi George. Um, I've watched a lot of your YouTube videos as well as your chats with Ryan J. Parker and I really like your videos and style of teaching. It cuts through a lot of the bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, I appreciate the comments. I graduated from music school last year majoring in guitar and I picked up some work in a tribute band. Your comments on music school I really enjoyed um, where I said that it's uh, both the best and worst investment that you can make. Um, as I can't stand walking back in there, so much negativity and stress that just isn't necessary. <laughs> and he enjoyed my Tom Hess videos. Good. Um, in particular, I love your transcription videos and have used them to help me with my own transcriptions. One of my biggest issues is my improvisation ability and my oral skills. Uh, they're not consciously developed as you'd like them to be. However, give me a guitar, give you a guitar, and you can work stuff out. Right. So, question one: I was wanting to know if you had any advice for transcribing chords and bass lines. I'm getting better transcribing single note melodies and phrases, but even hearing bass lines can prove tricky for me. In terms of ear training, there are so many methods that float around online to improve your ear. I guess that my goal is to be able to hear a song and know the chord progression, a rough idea of uh, the key and what's happening in the music with the ultimate goal of being able to play by ear better, hit the right notes and transcribe stuff a lot easier. Do you think transcribing is the best way to do this? Now, uh, George, that's a great question. Um, and you're right, there's a lot of um, contradictory information on the internet. And really all I'm doing is adding to that because... There's no gravitas behind what I say more so than anyone else. What I'm saying is no more valid than anyone else. All I can tell you is what worked for me. Um, and you can take this honestly because I'm not trying to sell you it. So um, my thoughts on this are my ear has developed in that area because I'm transcribing a lot. Yeah, sure. But my ear isn't actually as good as some of my friends is for things like picking up a song and just instantly being able to play it. Um, my friend Mike, um, that you may have seen on my channel, has one of the most astonishing ears for just picking up and playing along to any song uh, that I've ever heard. And I believe his reason for that is because he has never learned to read music or tab or anything like that. Everything has just been learning by ear. And when you learn a thousand songs, you start to hear the same chords over and over again and relationships between chords and you know common ways that chords are put together. I can't advise you in that area, and I'm not one of those guys that's going to advise you on something that he's not comfortable on, or he's not absolutely sure that he's got a good point on. But in terms of improving your ability to hear chords and hear bass lines, I was actually covering this in a Skype lesson with a student earlier who's um, applying to Berkeley, and my advice to him was the same that I'll give to you, and that's... Uh, and I picked this up from actually Max Milligan, one of my tutors when I was at music school. He he always say, if in danger or in doubt, always whip your arpeggio out. And I took that advice on board and I've played with arpeggios very, very strictly um, for a long time. When I'm learning a song, I'll just automatically play arpeggio uh, frameworks on it to help me understand the progression. And the beauty of an arpeggio is that it f uh, cleanly outlines the chord in the progression. So uh, I think they're a fabulous way to really train the ear and hone the ear in on the sound of a chord because we can't process, I mean we can process chords as a whole, but we can't uh, break a chord up into intervals unless we understand the sound of what intervals are. So if I just grab a guitar, um, as an example, if I hear an A minor 7 chord, I want... I want to play this chord, and if you ask me what that is, I'll go ba, 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 and then I know it's a minor seven chord based on that. If I played a major seven chord, I'll hear ba, 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 da, 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 
and that ability to hear any chord and the components that, it's, uh, that it consists of is a massively useful skill for me. It allows me to help um, over time. I, th I feel that you learn to pick out details in the chord, like, oh, I can hear that there's a ninth in there. You'll go to sing the arpeggio and you'll sing ba, 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 ba. Um, I go, that's not quite right, so ba, 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 yeah, and sing the ninth. Um, and that is uh, great ear training because you're forcing yourself to listen and that's what ear training is all about listening to sounds and building up a monophonic i.e. single note um, understanding of um, homophonic chordal work so that's uh, what I would deem to be relatively good advice and the other good bit of advice I'd give to you is being able to sing uh, bass lines when the bass line isn't there so um, being able to sing a one six two five again, if I pick up the guitar, I could play a one six two five. Ba 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 ba. But the ability to play and and hear the bass line, dum dum bum bum, ba ba da da ba da ba ba ba. That's um, a useful skill because it's trained me to listen for harmony that isn't there. Um, and when you really get down that path of trying to hear things that aren't there, that's when you're really starting to develop your ear. Um, and I'll just throw a disclaimer out there. My singing isn't good. It doesn't need to be good because it's not about my voice. The voice is just a way for me to demonstrate that I'm hearing something inside. I might not be able to replicate it. I can assure you that... Assure? assure you <laughs> that uh, I think it's both I can assure you that um, the sound that I hear in my head is absolutely correct my voice just doesn't replicate it well so that's your ear training question um, question two was it's clear to me during music school that there are um, a lot of these institutions that don't adequately prepare you for a career outside of the school walls and you admire how I've made a living out there on my own uh, would I have any advice on how to make a living just from music? Is it a case where you need to be able to diversify and cover many skills, playing, composing, transcribing, production? The answer to that is yes, yes, and yes. Um, I've been extremely lucky, and I'm not even going to pretend for one second that I'm not extremely lucky to be able to have a career in this line of work. Um, honestly, I can't put into words how lucky I am. Um, yeah, sure, I've developed a wide variety of skills, um, my transcription obviously is, is my big um, thing, that's my niche in the market as it were, um, but outside of that many of you will know I'm stylistically very varied, um, I have heavy metal albums out that are full of you know over the top shred guitar, um, I've released uh, blues, jazz, um, country, instructional material, I, I write columns in blues, jazz and country styles. Um, you know, I've got basic production skills and um, my reading is, is good and I'm essentially my mantra is um, there's no such thing as luck. I don't believe in luck. Uh, the old adage is that luck is nothing more than preparation meeting opportunity. And I genuinely, genuinely believe that in life you're presented with countless opportunities throughout your life. The only problem is you'll often pass them by because you're not prepared. I'm prepared for just about anything that comes my way. Um, on the flip side, you know, don't just take every opportunity that comes at you if you're not fully prepared for it. The lesson is be prepared. I, I live my life like a tiger, ready to pounce on any opportunity. Um, I emailed an old contact today just to help them out with some legal issues that they're uh, their site might have been having um, and uh, they said it was good to hear from me and offered me uh, the opportunity to release some products with them um, and that's an offer that's been there many times over the years um, and I appreciate it of course um, but now I'm in a position where I've got the time to consider doing stuff like that again um, so I'm ready I'm, I pounce on it and go yeah I, I really appreciate that thank you um, that gives you the other angle to making a career in the industry. It's not just about what you know. Unfortunately, it is who you know as well. That doesn't mean that untalented people uh, become successful. You still need to, you know, it's still what you know, 
but you can know everything in the world but if you don't know anybody it's very difficult to go out there and actually make a living um, I have a wide network of people um, that I am in contact with professionally and it's those guys actually that lined me up with my first professional work I was in London studying with Martin Goulding um, and he was kind enough to uh, recommend me for some teaching work for the International Guitar Foundation where I was teaching alongside guys like Martin and Andy James and Guthrie and you know the, the, my peers on, on that and it's, it's weird even to use a word like peers uh, because these are just legends of the industry but opportunities like that I was given um, when I didn't need to have those opportunities I wasn't owed those opportunities and I'm eternally grateful to Martin Goulding that I was given those opportunities um, and that allowed me to meet more people and start treating my uh, my work as a more professional outlet I got to know Andy better from doing that and that resulted in me doing transcription work for Andy um, in turn he recommended me for Lick Library um, but at the same time Tom Quayle also did the same because I went out of my way to get to know Tom Quayle um, because of his work and my transcription work um, so those recommendations allowed me to you know make uh, a bit more of a living via the Lick Library thing so it's very much a case of knowing people as well you need to be out there and talking to lots of people and just sort of being a part of some sort of social network and I don't literally mean just be on Facebook I mean really get involved and, and become a part of the community I think that's quite important um, I myself um, have given a lot of people professional opportunities as well um, that's not me bragging that's me saying that it's the very least I can do because I have a career because generous people gave me opportunities when not that I didn't deserve them I, I feel that I deserve them but they didn't have to give me these opportunities so I do um, send out transcription work to other people when I'm busy rather than just keeping it for myself um, and I don't I don't even um, outsource it to them in theory I could just take the work on and then pay someone less than I got paid to do it I don't I just put people in touch with other transcribers I know who could do with the leg up I've given people opportunities to come and uh, film at Lick Library and stuff like that um, this isn't me virtue signaling I'm just saying like get to know people because if you're good at what you do um, opportunities will come your way and you have to take them and capitalize on them uh, I'm not going to lie though, it's hard, you know, it's very, very hard. I've been very lucky, but I know a lot of people that are incredibly talented and for them it just doesn't happen. They have to maintain day jobs in order to get stuff done. There's nothing to be, um, you know, to, you don't need to judge these people for that. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a day job, um, but it just highlights how difficult it can be. Um, you know, I've got friends that tour the world in bands, but they also have day jobs. So, um it genuinely is very tough if you're if that's your priority making a living um, I'm not saying you need to reevaluate I'm just saying that you need to I don't even want to say have a backup plan you just need to be very real, very realistic um, put a bit of time into understanding <laughs> I always say this to people that I work with learn how to business <laughs> there's lots of people in this industry that just don't know how to business <laughs> they don't know how to deal with people professionally they don't know um, how important deadlines are and how to deal with people and how to deal with payment and professional conduct and I know I'm one to talk on that because I'm very outspoken but you know, this is my brand and I do what the fuck I like um, but uh, and that actually makes it slightly problematic when I'm working for other companies because sometimes my views can be spun as the views of the company and it doesn't look good on the company so you know looking back would I do things differently probably not because I'm an arrogant motherfucker but <laughs> um, it's just learning the importance of being professional wherever possible so there's that um, and your final question is that you live in Australia uh, but you feel that it's geographically too far away from any major music scene worldwide it takes 22 hours to get to London you can't do that if you've got a gig um, 14 to LA and 20 to New York um, and you're thinking of moving overseas and trying to get a career off the ground uh, you've got the option to go to the UK you've got relatives in Scotland so visa's not an issue um, and you've got heaps of friends who work at music summer camps in the US so uh, Canada or the US are options for you what do I think about those places and how did I find London um, I mean I loved London London is cripplingly expensive and I actually uh, have a, a good friend of mine John Becks who was a student of mine from Australia for 
good three or four years and he decided to make the move to London to uh, pursue a career over here and um, he was here for 18 months and he got he actually did well he got some work and I gave him some some chances at Lick Library and things like that but ultimately um, it just wasn't to him working out he wasn't happy in London because I wasn't happy in London London is a like I said it's cripplingly expensive me and my partner at the time were paying like 1100 1200 pounds a month in rent which means you have to work your fingers to the bone just to, to make ends meet um, which instilled actually a, a great kind of work ethic for my business in me it's three o'clock in the morning here and I'm still up working because I'm just used to doing that and I, I love doing that and I love helping clients out even now I'm, I'm doing this for you and like this isn't even a job I'm doing this because I love being in touch with people and helping people um, anyway so London is cripplingly expensive but then so is New York and so is LA um, that just is part of the territory of uh, living in a scene where there's a big music scene um, I don't feel that there's a massive music scene in London, at least there wasn't for what I do. I don't go out and gig, only because I've not had to uh, resort to going out and gigging. I'd rather have the option to spend time at home with my wife and, and my dog, um, rather than having to go out on the road and gig every night. Um, but, you know, if push came to shove, I'd, I'd happily go out and do that. Um, even then, you know, I had a couple of opportunities come my way. That being said, the singer for Hellcat Molly, um, David DeAndre, he uh, he gigs professionally, and he's uh, very in demand as both a singer and a guitar player, and, you know, he makes a good living. So it can be done, but I have to jump out and say that surely the same is true of Australia. Ultimately, John, my, my uh, Australian student, moved back to Australia, and now he's uh, very high up with uh, Yamaha Line 6. Um, he's one of their uh, head reps in the country, um, so he's you know very uh, he's doing well now. Um, and I know there's a, a music scene in Australia. I know there is. Um, there's guys like Michael Dolce who lives out in Australia uh, still. He's um, obviously making a good living. Um, James Ivani, not Ivani, uh, I believe. Am I pronouncing that right? He's Australian as well, I'm sure, and obviously you've got Brett Garcet that lives out there. Um, there's definitely a scene out there. It's really just a case of working out how you fit into the scene that you're in um, and how you can make some money out of it. There's no hard and fast answers to that one, unfortunately. You need to know what it is that's unique about you and go out and sell it. Um, I can't really help you on that one. Um, I love the US, don't get me wrong, and I've considered making a move to the US, but ultimately, you know... My business is working well, um, as is. I love Scotland. Scotland is absolutely beautiful. Um, we've just bought a house because my business has allowed me to be able to do that and the cost of living up here is considerably lower. Um, but the music scene is smaller, so it's always swings and roundabouts. Uh, living the life of a musician is hard work. There's no ifs, ands or buts about that one. Um, but if you love it, that's the important thing. And just to close this video... Um, that was always the most important thing to me. Um, <clears throat> my my YouTube video style and my teaching style probably comes across to you as very analytical. I'm very analytical, very intellectually minded. Um, and the Myers Briggs personality test. I'm classic INTJ. Um, I overthink and analyse everything. Um, and as part of that, I did very well in school. And I had the opportunities to go on a straight A student. I had the opportunities to go and do whatever I really wanted to do. Um, but my problem in school was that I had that combination of being the one that was going to get straight AIDS but also the most likely to throw a table across the room uh, which did happen um, I didn't I didn't have such a good life at home uh, but did well in school um, and I came to the realization one day that at some point I'm going to die and when I'm lying on my deathbed I want to be able to look back and say I did things my way um, even uh, even if I was a poor man, I did it my way. And I really meant that. I'd rather die poor but having done what I wanted to do than die a wealthy man who spent his life working for someone else and making them rich. And that's really what my business and my, I don't want to say success, but that's really where everything comes down to for me because it's genuine. Um, this is what I want to do. I need to do it. And I would rather be a homeless man living under a bridge with a guitar um, and just making music and being happy 
than being a slave to the grind and I know that makes me sound like a massive hippie I'm not a massive hippie <laughs> the point is um, it's the passion that kind of sees you through and people will meet you if you're passionate and that goes a long way so thank you very much for your questions um, I hope this has been of interest to some other people out there if you have enjoyed this please do hit the subscribe button the like button go and check my patreon out support me on there it's appreciated and uh, if you do have any questions of your own that you'd like me to answer if I get a decent email or decent YouTube comment um, I will film a little video response to it so peace out guys and uh, thanks so much for all your support it means the world I'll see you again soon bye